do I feel like I linger? Linger between the words to say, eh? To say the words to remember. He has acquired an asset of, I believe it's like 80 billion, something like that. Um, he has a really impressive record of like 23 wins and one loss. Uh, this might be outdated as of King and Omega, but I don't know for sure. Uh, but I do know that this is accurate information as of his uh, debut in King and Ashura, uh, possibly at the end of King and Ashura as well. Um, and he's just like a little 19-year-old kid uh, who basically, he used to be like a hoodlum or like a, you know, a... Um, what would you call it? Basically like a bully or a ruffian or whatever. He used to be kind of like a street hood. Uh, and he was uh, picked up by his master and basically taught jujitsu. And it turns out like he's a genius. He's a natural. He's a prodigy. Um, by 14, he was already fighting Kengen matches. So, you know, five years prior to the events of Kengen Ashura, you know, that's when he, he debuted. He started. He, he joined at 14. He wasn't even... I, I don't think he was a legal adult. He wouldn't be considered a legal adult here in America, but I'm not sure about Japan. Um, but yeah, he's he's literally the youngest to ever join the Kengen matches. But, like, just because he's young doesn't mean he's, you know, bad. Like, of course, he has this win record of 23 wins and one loss, which means, obviously, 23 people walked up to him and thought, this is going to be easy, he's just a little kid. And then they got slapped. So... Um, yeah, Imai's whole thing over the, the, like, course of the series is that he, like, grows in potential, he massively improves in, like, a short amount of time, like, over the course of, a, like, a single fight, he'll basically walk in and walk out as, like, a brand new person. Uh, and even though, like, of course, like, with these tournament-style, uh, fights and stuff, He's carrying injuries into his next match, but it seems like he's only getting stronger and faster and, you know, fighting better. Uh, he's able to, like, he, he's got some pretty amazing um, abilities and stuff. Um, over the course of all his different fights, um, we, we don't really get to see too many moves, per se, but... Um, there's no doubt in my mind that he is, if not improving on everything he's doing, definitely getting stronger and faster. Like, we flat out see that, especially in his fight against Okoya, but I'll get to that in a bit. Um, yeah, he has a fight with, uh, his first fight, as I also think, if I remember correctly, it's the first fight in the entire series. His fight is against the Emperor, Adam Dudley. He's, like, an American street fighter and former, uh, NHL, uh, hockey player. And he's actually, you know, it's a pretty decent fight, you know, uh, Cosmo's whole thing is that he's a jujitsu artist, he, he's like the king of strangleholds, you know, he's, you know, he's always doing the grabs and the holds, the submissions and the takedowns and stuff. And Adam was generally like a striker-based fighter, but his strong legs definitely gave him an advantage here with basically the fact that, one, he could throw full power jabs even while being mounted by Cosmo, and probably one of the more useful things is he could stand up using nothing but his legs. So Cosmo's in a mount and all of a sudden, you know, basically they're back in a situation where it's strikes because Adam just stands up. Like, he's got a person on top of him and he just stands up. You know, Cosmo's having to go on the defense despite being on, in a full mount because he's throwing these full power jabs from, like, laying down on the ground. Um... It's part of his whole, like, hockey background, how he was able to, you know, have such strong legs and throw jabs at full power despite, you know, not really having any time to, like, wind up a punch. But, uh, you know, we'll get to Adam eventually. Right now, this is Emai's spotlight. You know, he, uh, he, he's fighting Adam, and they're, they're going back and forth, you know. Cosmo's trying to get him in strangles and submissions and chokes and stuff. Adam's trying to punch the crap out of him. Um... And, uh, Emai actually uses this really cool technique. It's, like, the first time we're, we're introduced to, like, a, a, like, a serious, like, okay, we know that, that, that stuff's about to hit the fan, 
when we see this bust out. Like, we see Adam use his, like, high stick hockey shot or something like that, and that's, like, his ultimate technique, but we never even actually get to see what happens when he uses it, because Cosmo uses this technique called zone, which basically, you have to, like, see, like, the point zero or, like, the point one second interval uh, where your your opponent is about to land their punch and they're completely focused on the attack. They're not, like, watching the opponent. They're not, like, paying attention to their surroundings. There's just, like, a, a tenth of a second where they are 100% totally dedicated to the, the attack and the attack alone. And in that time, basically what Cosmo does is he dips into, like, a blind spot for the opponent. So, like, for Adam's case... He uses the obstruction of Adam's own arm as it's extending towards him, uh, and he basically puts him in a hold. You know, the, the, the timing is very quick, so he, he uses this blind spot, he slips the, the, the attack, and he puts them in a hold, and he's basically, like, he's got to put you in some kind of hold where he can, um, you know, make something out of it, because this is kind of like a... I wouldn't say, like, a last-ditch effort, but it, it really does put him in a bad situation if he fails zone. Um, now, of course, being the genius at jujitsu that he is, he basically just adapts to whatever happens. But, you know, in that one instance, you know, p being in a hold, you know, with this zone technique, you want to you use that to, you know, cinch the wind. Um, yeah, he, it, it basically, to his opponent, it looks like he disappears in, in thin air, and then all of a sudden we, you know... They are so focused on the attack, they imagine themselves winning, and then all of a sudden they're brought to reality and Cosmo has choked them out, they're actually unconscious, they weren't even able to tell that they were knocked out, or at least that's the case with Adam, and the winner is Cosmo, you know, he defeats Adam with zone, uh, really cool, really cool, uh, like, kind of like a subversion of expectations. Uh, you, you, you tend to see that a lot in Kengen Ashra, sub, uh, subversion of expectations. Um, but that was, like, the, really, like, the, I guess you could say the nail in the coffin to begin, uh, the whole subversion of expectations, you can never really predict who's gonna win the fight kind of thing, like, it's always gonna, there's always gonna be, like, a plot twist, and then another plot twist, and then another one, and you don't know how many plot twists they're gonna throw in there, all you know is, like, guessing who's gonna win a fight is, you know, you can't use, like, normal stereotypes and tropes in Kengen Ashra, cause you're gonna get it wrong. Or, or you're gonna get it right, or it's exactly the person you thought was gonna win. I mean, they, they do, like, the double switcheroo, like, oh, you know, that guy looks like he's gonna win, and he has every reason to win, so I think I'm gonna go with the other guy, because they like to kind of throw you off when you're making your guess. Nope, it was the guy that that was obviously gonna win. He, he won, and it was a pretty clear-cut victory, you know? It's like, well, okay, that's what I thought was gonna happen, but you kind of switched it up on me. Uh, in any case, yeah, he beats Adam with zone. It's a very cool moment. You know, we, we see Adam win and stuff, and then all of a sudden, eh, eh, you know, actually, yeah, scary, scary bowl cut man has defeated you. Uh, and then his second fight is against uh, Akoya Seishu, the, um, the, uh, the executioner, the, uh, the vigilante riot police officer. And he basically, like, annihilates Imai. You really hate to see it, but, um, yeah, Akoya basically, like, not only is he winning, but he, like, tortures Cosmo, it's, it is actually genuinely kind of hard to watch, like, like, the people in the audience are kind of like, oh, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't sign up to watch this, what is going on, and, like, you know, Cosmo's, like, like, desperate to escape, you know, he's trying, he's trying to think of something, you know, he's, he's terrified, his teeth are chattering, he's going crazy, and, um, you know, Akoya's just relentless, he keeps, like, again, he's not even fighting at this point, he's torturing the poor boy, and, um, yeah, even the fighters are, like, in the bleachers grimacing and stuff, and they're like, like, dude, what is wrong with you, like, just, just punch him in the face or something, just end it, why are you doing this, um, and then, like, Cosmo suffers from, like, a mental breakdown, and then he realizes that he doesn't like fighting people, he likes winning, in, like, winning fights against people, and he goes crazy, and he starts, like, god, he's like a wild beast, he, he starts winning, and he starts, like, getting, you know, Akoya in a chokehold and everything, and he's, like, really sticking it to Akoya, and, like, Akoya 
does something. I forget, like, he uses, like, something that he's been using before. And Cosmo not only doesn't react, he, like, bites Akoya's leg and takes a chunk out. Like, this man is a feral beast, and he actually ends up winning the fight. He's, like, pretty destroyed. Uh, he's actually destroyed to the point that uh, his employer was thinking about swapping him out for um, Okubo, who had just lost, but was still in good enough condition that he could become a fighter for Nishihonji, and, you know, they could potentially win. So... You know, he's, he's really injured. He, he does have a fight with one of the, the Guardians, uh, Lung Min. Um, he even, like, put Gao Lang on the defensive, if I remember correctly. He was doing pretty good. Um, he was, of course, capable of advance like most of the Guardians were. I, th I think they all were, if I remember correctly. But, um, yeah, he had a fight with him. They, they defeated him, uh, Lung Min. Uh, and then, of course, he had to fight Okubo, for the position of the fighter that would represent Nishi Honji. And even though Okubo is like insanely powerful, like he was almost enough to defeat the Fang. Like the two people that were like right there like on the precipice of defeating, you know, uh, uh, Kano Agito, uh, the Fang of Matsudo, uh, this, this like brilliant fighter who stands among all fighters, you know, the only person who, like, the only two people who are really able to, you know, touch the precipice that is, you know, the Fang of Metsudo. It was uh, Gao Lang and Okubo, and now Cosmo's got to fight Okubo for his position to prove himself, and he wins. He defeats Okubo. I think he off-screened him, too, which is like, wow, like, like, is that disrespect on my man Okubo? He really taking two L's in a row? Or is that just some respect on Cosmo? Because that's crazy. Um, in any case, his next fight is against um, Tokido Oma, and, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is one of those situations where you're like, no, they're going to do a, a switcheroo and the main character is going to lose and the main character wins. <laughs> Oma, Oma beats Cosmo. You know, it was a good fight. Um, Oma pretty much realized he was outmatched in jujitsu, but I think he did a good job combating jujitsu with, of course, his own techniques. Like he has the, um, you know, the Nico style where he, um, I can't remember all the names of the Nico style, but of course the one where he uses techniques similar to jujitsu. Um, Cosmo, during his fight with Akoya, I think, uh, utilizes this um, this ability that uh, characters in Kengen, uh, some of the higher tier ones have, called foresight, which basically allows them to. Well, well, it's basically analytical prediction. You analyze your opponent's tactics, their techniques, their fighting capabilities, their their style, uh, their habits and stuff, idiosyncrasies, and um, you're basically able to like like 100% accurately predict what they're going to do, and more often than not, only people with foresight are able to beat other people with foresight, um, but the problem with foresight is that it kind of takes a while to develop, you got to watch your opponent, you got to like make sure you're paying attention, and you have to divert a lot of focus into your analysis, so your normal reactions become slower. Uh, it really sucks, but Cosmo actually got the chance to use Foresight and, and a pretty solid Foresight on Oma. And uh, it definitely helped in the fight, but it did not cinch the victory. Uh, but, you know, props to Cosmo. You know, Oma would later go on to, you know, put up a decent fight against the Beard, who is the only person in the entirety of the Kengen tournament that is, like, easily stronger than than the fang of metsudo like they fought and kuroki gensai never even once looked like he was actually in serious danger like i guess the worst you could say about their fight on um uh kuroki gensai's side of the the fight is that there were a few times when he was fighting uh, Kano agito where he kind of looked a little surprised or he was maybe shocked by one or two things and then he proceeded to beat the Fang's ass. So, um, yeah, I mean, uh, I would definitely consider Cosmo a high tier of the of the Kengen verse. I wouldn't necessarily place him in the like the god tier. I would probably reserve that for, you know, like straight up like either the finalists or at the very least like I don't know, uh, maybe the semifinalists, maybe. 
uh, for sure, the beard and probably Oma. I'm, I'm not sure. There's a, there's a bit of contention between Oma and the Fang during the Kengan Ashra tournaments as to, like, who actually gave the beard a better fight. Because on the one hand, you know, very obviously he was having more time or a difficult time or more difficult time dealing with uh, the Fang. But to be fair, Oma was walking in with things like he was literally almost dead. Um... He, oh, uh, the, the biggest handicap, I think, it was a massive handicap for the fight, is the fact that Gensai practically knew every single attack that Oma had in his arsenal. Uh, so, Oma's got big disadvantages, yet he put up a fairly similar fight to Gensai as uh, Agito did. So, I would say that, at the very least, the Fang and Oma are comparable but of course, Gensai stands at the top of the tournament as the, uh, I suppose you could say he's the Yujiro Hanma figure. At the very least, uh, I consider him uh, comparable to the likes of like Dopo Orochi when he was in his prime. I, I always see people drawing comparisons between the two. Um, both, both very powerful and very skilled uh, karate grandmasters, you know. But, um... Yeah, that's, that's pretty much it for his role in Kengen Ashura. Uh, unfortunately, in Kengen Omega, because um, there are different factions within the, the Kengen, um, like the Kengen body, so to speak, like the, uh, the officials and everything, uh, there, there are different factions. People who agree with, you know, Mr. Nogi and Yamashita Kazuo and everyone, uh, the, the kind of, I, must, I guess you could say the good side. And then the less than desirable side, like um, Iwami Heavy Industries, uh, I can't remember the the CEO's name, but she's like the the crazy sharp tooth lady that's like always butting heads with the um, the owner of the Golden Pleasure Group. Um, she's like not part of their faction, and of course there's Toyo Electric Company. They were like the I I guess you could say the main bad guys of the King and Ashra. Um, like tournament, like they tried to throw a coup and they had all these plans and they were doing these bad things behind the scene. Um, they're not part of like the good guy, uh, faction, so to speak. You know, not, they're not necessarily good people, and the bad guys aren't necessarily bad guys. Um, but because there was like dissent from the the side that was like, oh, there are too many people who are on the Nogi side. Uh, there are too many people representing Kengen from the Nogi faction, you know? Uh, so, unfortunately, Cosmo was deprived of the chance to basically, you know, tear ass on the uh, the Purgatory people that they're currently having a tournament against in Kengen Omega. I think it would have been awesome to see how much stronger he's gotten. Uh, he's a ponytail now. Very cool. Um, and I'm sure he's uh, improved on his foresight, and he's probably a lot better at jujitsu. Like, like not only was he like the the, I would argue to say because he did beat Okubo, I would say he's the best grappler out of everybody in the Kengenverse, uh, bar none. But I mean, he he's got like the the very stereotypical jujitsu moves, things like um you know python hold. Uh, he he usually likes to uh, like combo python hold into rear naked choke. So basically, he wraps his arms, or his legs around your arms, so that you can't use your arms. Like, he, he basically straddles your back and wraps his legs around your arms so that you can't use your arms. And then he puts you in a rear naked choke so that you really can't do anything about it. And after about seven seconds, you know, pressure to the carotid artery, you're done. You pass out. Uh, it's a very good combo. You know, he's he's a like like it, I keep saying he's he's a genius when it comes to jujitsu. He just knows how to combo moves together. He knows how to really make every move count. He he ha he leaves a big impact. You know, uh, he's got the triangle choke. I think that's actually the move he used to knock out Adam. Like he comboed zone into the triangle choke, uh, beautifully performed. And of course his foresight his foresight isn't as good as like the the god tiers. Like, Kaneda, who's basically the person who, you know, I don't know if he created this per se, but he was the first person we saw use it. He was considered the expert at foresight, and he could uh, see seven steps ahead. So, like, he already knew what you were going to do in seven hits. Like, oh, you're going to throw this hit, then this hit, then this hit. You know, this is how you're going to react to this, this is how you're going to react to this. 
Cosmo was only able to see one or two moves ahead. But of course, Kaneda being like the expert, this was literally his main jam. I was able to see seven step steps ahead. And then people like the Fang were able to see like ten steps ahead. And then Gensai, I don't know if they ever actually gave him a number, but he was able to read ahead of the Fang of Metsudo. Like that was a big shock. Like he was like, oh, you fell for my trap. Teehee. Okay, so anyway. Um, yeah, zone, linking zone and foresight, or foresight into zone, into something like his, you know, rear naked choke, the python hold, the triangle choke, you know, any of the, you know, typical jujitsu techniques, you know, uh, like the submissions and the strangles and the holds, everything you'd stereotypically see from somebody who's, you know, got the moniker of the king of stranglers, you know, the, the, you know, he's one of Nishi Honji's seven fists, you know, he's a big deal, like, no cap. He's somebody important. Um, I think he's actually, he actually ends up, um, it's 21 after the time skip. Yeah, that's right. Um, so yeah, pretty much that's, that's everything that, uh, Emi Cosmo has to bring to the table. Uh, I hope you guys like the video. Uh, I hope you guys are liking all the videos. Uh, I plan to do a few more, you know, whenever. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, click the bell for notifications because I'm going to keep popping out videos whenever I can. Um, my schedule's a little bit busy right now. You'll notice that there's been a, a slight drop off in uh, video production, but I'm going to do my best to keep popping these out. Uh, I hope you guys are watching these and enjoying these and they're educating you in some way. Um, and if not, you know, watch them for the entertainment. Uh, I like to watch videos like this when I'm in the middle of doing something. I put them on in the background. Don't really care about the, um, you know, what's I, what exactly is on the screen. I'm more so here to hear the person talk. Uh, so thank you guys for watching. If you like videos like this, prepare for more because I have more anime I'd like to cover. I think the next uh, video I'm going to do is a versus battle between, you know, two characters I've covered so far or, you know, whatever it'll you guys will find out when i when i post it so uh thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye